Hello, and welcome back to my Mix Lab. My name is Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game, and today is your complete guide to UAD console. Now this app is like a DAW, but not entirely a DAW. It's just the mixer section. It works just like the console in a recording studio that sits there while the computer runs the DAW that does all of the musical arrangement and automation and all of the regular production things while the console handles all of the mix and audio routed related things. So that's exactly why UAG called this app console. Now this is an app that does not run off of the processors on your computer. You have to own a UAD interface or a universal audio satellite box to run this application and to run all universal audio plugins. And there's a very good reason for that is because this app is completely latency free. And no matter how many plugins and master chains and vocal chains you have loaded up in your DAW that you're recording in, in my case, I have Ableton running in the background recording my microphone. It doesn't affect the latency of what you hear with your mic in your headphones. This is a direct path for your microphone to go straight to your headphones with a little bit of sauce on it along the way. And that's exactly what we're gonna get into next. But first, I'm just gonna get into a little bit of an orientation of all the controls you have here on your console. Starting at the very top, you have the option of increasing the gain. And I have my mic going through an external preamp. So to completely bypass the preamps inside your Apollo, I start out with the gain all the way down and the input on line like this. If you were plugging a microphone, if you were plugging a condenser microphone or a Shure SM7B in my case, straight into your Apollo, you would switch it to the mic input, use phantom power if your mic requires it, and likely use the built-in low cut and turn up your gain like this and you would start to hear your microphone. But since my mic is plugged into channel one, nothing is connected. Another really important thing you might notice is I have some stereo channels here and you can very easily link two channels together by right clicking and enabling link. And it would turn, if I right clicked and did it to one, it would turn one, two into a stereo channel instead of having them as two separate channels. And that's a very easy shortcut to arrange your gear however you like it. And that allows me to use my first two channels for mono things like my microphone and my guitar. Save these for stereo things. And you can also rename these if you'd like to. Like I said, I like to use these for my synth. This is usually my mic. And this is usually where I set up my guitar. I'm using an Apollo X8, so I have a long list of inputs. You might have an Apollo Twin or an Apollo Solo which might have less. And another funny thing with these console presets, if I were to save this as a session and put it in the downloads, only people with an Apollo X8 would be able to open it. So I'm just gonna show you some tips and tricks that you can follow along with. So no matter which UAD interface you have, you'll be able to follow along as well. So let's go in and load up some actual plugins. Now my favorite vocal plugin is right here, the Manly Vox Box, and this is many vocal plugins all in one. As you can see, you have the option to add some more low cut. You can push the compression a little bit harder with the input gain, or you could pull the threshold down just to make it more sensitive or push it up, I mean. I also like to use the attack on medium and the release on medium fast and the de-esser. All of these sound really great, honestly. High peak, low peak, a little EQ adjustment. Everything you need to get your drive vocal sounding perfect. I always like to combine a little bit of regular compression with some parallel compression. And this UAD update added a mix knob to the 1176s, which makes it just so easy to add parallel compression to your vocals. And as you can see, I'm adding just like the slightest little bit. And that's really all you need, because as you can see, if you turn it up, it gets really loud. We don't need that much. So I'm just going to keep this down at like 5, 10%. And now a lot of singers, while they're recording, prefer to have some effects. And you could see the effects that you have loaded on the aux channels by clicking this show aux option. And I have here on the first insert of aux one, a reverb, which means if we go to aux one and turn it up, we'll be able to add some reverb to our voice. And I'm using the EMT 250. We can make it longer or we can make it shorter. Very useful for any kind of vocals. I even like running my guitars through this plugin. Let me turn this reverb down a little bit. Actually, I'll just turn it off. You guys understand what it sounds like. 
and you can add any secondary effects here that you want on aux 2. They limit you to two auxes, but honestly, for a headphone mix, you don't really need much more than just reverb. If you put a delay in here, it's not going to sync up to the tempo of your DAW. Um, it just doesn't know how to connect like that. Maybe sometime in the future it will, but I usually just do reverbs and EQ compression and standard things like that here in my console. In addition to setting up regular inserts, you also have this insert spot up here called Unison. And this is where you can add a preamp to your Apollo and actually change the way that the hardware and the circuitry in the Apollo behave and to emulate some classic preamp sounds. And they have a huge list here. I usually don't use the Unison inserts because I like to record dry, completely dry signal into my DAW. Uh, even if I love the way the headphone mix sounds, I want to be able to have the flexibility to add that plug in later in the mix or maybe not. So a very important feature that I always use when I use Apollo is right here, the UAD monitoring button. This ensures that all the effects that you have loaded up here, here, will not get recorded here when you actually record your mic in your DAW. That being said, if you load up a Unison plugin, it gets recorded, no matter what you do with this button. So you really don't see me using Unison plugins for that often, not because they sound bad. It's just, I guess you could call it a commitment issue. I would rather just add it later in the mix rather than having it here forced to be recorded through my console, even if you have UAD monitoring selected. So Unison is a great option if you like to commit to the sound, um, and then the UAD record button would be for you. In addition to the line and microphone inputs, there's also, like I said, I use the high impedance input on the front of my Apollo to plug my guitar in. And that just automatically converts over when it detects that you plugged something into it. And that's pretty much all the important controls here for the mixer that you see repeated on all the channels. The only other thing that I want to point out is if you're using one of the larger Apollos, that's the Apollo X4 or the Apollo X8, you have these digital SPDIF outputs in addition to having stereo quarter inch outputs. And I love using it as a digital cable loop so that I can loop my audio out and back in. That's exactly how I'm recording my mic dry with this channel and the signal getting sent to my headphones with this channel. So if I turn on my reverb back in console, you'll see it appearing here on the bottom channel in Ableton. That digital SPDIF input and output is extremely useful if you're taking screen recordings or using OBS to broadcast like the audio coming out of your computer. Just a permanent physical cable loop that will capture all audio. Let me show you real quick. Let me turn my reverb back on and then let me zoom in over here. See clean audio on top, reverb tails on the bottom. So the SPDIF input and output, digital signal, it doesn't go through any A to D conversion. Super useful trick that is available to you if you have one of the larger Apollos. It's actually how I record all of my tutorials. And for some reason it shows up as input 17, 18, um, I guess because it's a digital input. But yeah, that's just another little bonus trick that I found out along the way that if you can take advantage of if you have one of the larger Apollos. Speaking of inputs and outputs, when you connect your speakers to your Apollo, traditionally you use output one and two, but you also have output three and four to maybe connect a secondary pair of speakers. And that's what this alt button is here for. When you switch it to alt, this turns orange and your secondary speakers come on and you can go back to your regular monitors. So your Apollo actually has a built-in monitor switcher if your Apollo has enough outputs. And again, this is something that only the larger Apollos X4 or X8 would be able to do, but another extremely useful trick that just expands how useful your Apollo can be in your studio. Let me turn my speakers down so my mic doesn't feed back. Uh, you can mute it right here, or you can press the button on your Apollo. A lot of people think that to mute your speakers, you have to pull it all the way down, but you can actually just press the button and turn it on to mute or click the button here with your mouse. And finally, here in the control room tab, you have a couple more options like a talk back if you have your vocalist in a booth. This will engage the built-in microphone in your Apollo. 
so you can more easily talk to them. And that's a really handy feature for anybody with a vocal booth setup. So as you can see, this console application is a really critical counterpart to any DAW because as you get creative and produce and add plugins in your favorite arrangement and production software, your ability to turn on your microphone and record latency-free vocals gets worse and worse with every plugin that you add. So that's why there's a huge advantage to being a Universal Audio Apollo owner, a console app user, and I hope this tutorial helped you find some new tips and tricks to better use your interface in your workflow to enhance your vocal recording process in any DAW. My name is Reed Stefan, Realist Puppet in the Game, and I'll catch you guys next time in another My Mix Lab tutorial. Peace out.